Hey guys, it's May May, and I've had a couple of people ask me to show again how to make a shaker card. Now here's what's funny. I don't understand what it is about a shaker card that is intimidating, but they are, and I don't get it. Because I say to myself, they're really not that hard, but when you look at them, they just seem, I don't know, they seem intimidating. So we're going to do our best to take some of that issue away, and I'm going to show you my two new favorite, well not my two, I'm going to show you one new favorite technique that I like that makes it look a lot harder than it is, but it's super simple. So that's what we're going to do today. The first thing I want to show you is, to make a shaker card you obviously need some sort of acetate. This is the part that's going to be clear to let your shaker pieces come behind it, so we've got that. The next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to utilize this set from Jolie's Boutique, which was sent to me by Nancy. And Nancy, I hope I say your last name right. It's either Reach or Right, and I don't know which one, but I apologize if I get it wrong. But she sent me a lot of this stuff, and these little guys are the things that you get at like Michael's and Walmart and Hobby Lobby that have the cutest little pieces in them. But unless you're a scrapbooker, you think you can't use them. But I'm here to show you today you can, and we're going to make a cute shaker card with it. The next thing you'll need is just some craft paper. Okay, so I have a couple of pieces of cardstock here. This is a card base that is four and a quarter by 11, and I'm going to score it down the middle, or not, well, it is the middle, at five and a half. Now, the reason I'm scoring it at five and a half is because this is a, a portrait style card. That's the way we're going to, um, that's the orientation of this card, is portrait style. This cardstock is so thick, and every time I fold it, no matter how well I score it, it wants to do this buckling thing. So it's 110 pound card start, which is a beautiful base for a card. And I think it's great for a shaker card because it's so thick. Anyway, there's our card base. Now I'm telling you, this one is super easy and I'm keeping it easy because I want you to be able to see the simplicity when we break it down. That's the trick with a shaker card. You just have to break it down. You need two things. You need a void of some sort that you can lift up on dimension, and then you need the acetate so you can put the shakers behind it. That's the two biggest parts. Now, this okay, this is just a square of cardstock, or it's not even a square. It's three and three quarters by one, two, three, four. Okay, so it's three and three quarters by four. And now all I need to do is make a frame here, okay? Now you can get a frame several different ways. You can get it from making your own frame like I'm going to do today, or you can purchase paper frames. You can use your Cricut. I'm going to show you that in a second because we're going to make multiple cards. The first one's super simple. The second one is still simple but a little more detail. So here's what we're going to do. I'm using my um, cutting board and my ruler here to help me know where to cut. So I'm coming in half an inch in and half an inch down with my blade. And I'm going to cut to half an inch away, which is going to be about right here. I just had to make sure I didn't go too far. So basically, I'm going to make myself a half inch frame, if that makes sense. A half inch um, rectangle. Okay, so let me get this lined up. It doesn't have to be perfect, but you know how we are. Okay, so now I'm going to go from my last cut to half an inch away from the edge, which is right there. Turn it. You don't have to do half an inch. I'm doing half an inch because I want you to have a really good view. I want you to be able to see what I'm doing really good and clear. Then another half an inch. I think I did that one crooked, but we'll get over it. And then I'm going to come half an inch in and match these guys up. Now, I got to talking and went too far on one of my cuts, but you're not going to do that, okay? I'll show you what I mean. I went a tiny bit further than I should have. I didn't quite get through that one either with my X-Acto blade while I was talking, just right here. But we're just going to pretend like that didn't happen, and we're going to use that frame. Now, this frame is going to be what allows us to have shaker items behind the acetate, okay? So this is my acetate sheet, and I need to cut it down to size. The acetate sheet gets cut to the same size as your frame or the piece that is going to have the opening, okay? So it'll get cut to the same size of that. Or, let's say you had like a little heart and all you were doing was a little heart. You just cut enough acetate to totally cover whatever the opening is. And this one looks like I'll be able to cut this just like this using my X-Acto knife because it's already the right size. So I got a little break on that one. Got a little lucky. 
So let's just cut this real quick. Doesn't have to be perfect because it's going to be in the back. It's a good thing because I totally went off my line there. All right. So now we have acetate frame, okay, and you're going to need your foam tape, your dimensional tape, because that's what's going to give you the distance for your shaker, okay? Now then, the top piece, whatever your opening may be, is going to get glued straight down to your acetate. You do not need a gap between the decorative piece and the acetate. The only distance you need is between acetate and card base, okay? So here's what we're going to do. We're going to glue this straight down. So, a little glue on the back of my frame. I hope I'm not trying to make this simple and making it hard as I go. I hope I'm keeping it simple for you. All right, and then I'm just going to put it on top of that acetate, line it up where you can't see the acetate behind it, except where you want to see it, you know, in the opening. So now we basically have a window. You see? And that's what you're looking for is a window of some sort. It does not have to be a square. It can be a heart. It can be any shape you want. And you can cut it by hand or on your cutting machines or with a die cutter or with a punch. Anything you want to do. So there's the first part, okay? Now let's flip it over and put on our foam tape. Now the trick with the foam tape for me is that I like it to be two thicknesses high. Now the reason I do a double thickness is because the foam tape I use is a thin foam tape. If you use dimensional tape that's thicker than this, you do not have to do the double like I'm going to do. But I want it to sit up a little higher on my project. Now, this is obviously too wide, so I'm going to cut it down. And I'm going to see if I can get four strips out of this. Because the only thing this has to do is create a barrier for my shaker pieces that are going to go inside and then attach this to the card. That's really all it has to do. It doesn't have to um, cover the whole back of our frame or anything. So I'm gonna see how much I can get out of this strip. And I'll show you what I mean when we get it cut and in place. So I have these pieces cut, just lay that down. Now I'm gonna go and, you know what I'm gonna do? I'm gonna put this on this white paper so you can see it. Okay, so you can see where we glued it down. All right, we've glued our base down. Now I'm gonna take this and wherever I want my glitter to stop, okay, like inside this frame, wherever I want my glitter to stop is where this piece is gonna go. In other words, I went a little past that edge because I want it to have a little um, room for the glitter to go behind that frame and ensure that you do not see my foam tape, okay? So I'm gonna do the same thing here. I'm just gonna put this beside and the most important thing is that your foam tape has to shut. Your um, dimensional opening here has got to be flush and closed. If you have any holes, then whatever you put in there to shake is going to come out. So you want to make sure when you put your pieces together, they are totally closing off the section where the glitter or the little um, shaky pieces are going to go. I hope that makes sense. I think it does. All right, so I'm going to put this one down, totally flush with my last piece, and make sure it closes off our square on this end, which means we're going to cut it, and I'm going to bring this to where you guys can see it. We're going to cut it to where it completely closes off. Now, I'm not worried about this little gap because that's not going to have glitter inside of it. It's on the inside that's going to have the glitter, okay? Now, I'm going to cut four more pieces in this same length because I want to double this. Remember, we talked about that. So I want to make this two thicknesses high. All right, so I have my four pieces cut, and we're going to add it here. Now, the next thing you want to do is pull the tape, the adhesive backer, the protective strip off, and then add your second strip right on top, making sure it's going to still close up. Now, you can see it's still just a tiny bit too long. I'm just going to trim that away. And I'm not getting rid of these. Let me show you what I'm doing. These little pieces, I stick them on the side of my foam tape, and then they become little adhesive pieces I can use in the future. So don't waste them. I know they're just tiny pieces, but they are usable. Okay, so I have that foam tape doubled up, so it's about a quarter of an inch off of the frame. And now I can fill this guy up. But before I fill it up, I want to do one thing, and that is to use my powder tool. And I like to do this. This is... um. 
an EK Success powder tool. I don't know if you've seen these before, but people use them for embossing. But I like to do it because I feel like this gets a little staticky. And if you put the powder on there, it kind of takes some of that static off. And um, it doesn't really clean it or anything, but it gets the static off. And also, anywhere where you might have missed lining your foam tape up per perfectly, it'll get some of that out of there too. And then I just kind of knock it out because that's got way too much in it. So I'm going to use a little cloth to clean some of that out. Okay, so the powder's in there, everything's done. Now what I want to do is put in what I want to be the shaker element. So it can be um, glitter, it can be little um, little punches or little confetti pieces. I'm going to use silver and gold since we're doing the graduation theme. So I have some, this is Walmart glitter. I just bought this kit at Walmart. And this is some silver. If you guys know me very well, you know I do not like glitter. <laughs> so me using this is a stretch anyway. So let's put some in there. And I'm going to have to use a lot because I made a pretty large um, opening here. So you could probably take that lid off, but if I do, I'll end up with it everywhere. So I'm also going to use some gold. Just sprinkle that in there with it. And I might put some red in here because I'm looking at that little diploma that I'm probably going to use and it's got some red. So that'll help to add some more. But you could use like school colors. That would be cool. If you had little stars, I don't have any little stars. I wish I did. That'd be perfect. I just have this glitter. You don't have to use a lot, but I, like I said, I'm, this is not very thick or very big anyway, so it'll work just fine. All right, so there's the glitter element. And then you decide one of two things. You can let your card base be what seals this in. It's a little hard to do that, though, because you have to flip this over or either put your card base on top and hope you get it in just the right spot. Or you can cut another piece that will fit perfectly on here. That's what I'm going to do. And I'm going to do a little bit shorter than the outer piece. So I'm going to do a piece that is three and a quarter by three and three quarters. So this little piece is going to seal this up because we're going to put it right on there. So we're going to remove this adhesive backer on our foam tape. And you want to make sure you use your powder before you do this because if you get powder on it at this point, it's just going to mess up all of this adhesive. This is what's going to seal this dude in. Okay. And now I'm going to put the backer on, which you could use pattern paper. You could use anything you wanted for the backer. All this is going to do is seal our glitter in and make sure you get it sealed all the way down. Now when you flip it over, we've created a shaker. So you see how that works? Get some to fall down so you can see it. And that glitter is so staticky, but glitter does that. So there's that. So it becomes the shaker element. And shake it a good bit and see if any's coming out. Not seeing any coming out, but you want to make sure you got it closed up nice and tight. All right, so this becomes the piece that can now go onto your card. And I'm going to do that with some wet glue. So now I've got glue on the back of that, and I'm just going to decide where I want it to go on the front of my card. I don't love that glitter. It's really, really staticky, but that's just glitter. It does fall, but, okay, so this is the shaker portion, and that seems very boring because it's just a big old shaker, right? Here's what I love about this method I'm fixing to show you. Let me bone fold this down because it's wanting to pop up since I opened it. Okay. So remember, I told you we were going to use this little guy, which is so cute, from Jolie's, or is it Jolie's? Yeah, Jolie's Boutique. And pull these little guys out. Okay, so I'm going to take this dude, who's already got adhesive on the back, and I'm going to place it on top like this. So that becomes an element around the shaker card. I'm going to take this little mortar board and put it up here like this. Super cute. And then I'll take this little graduation piece and put it there. And then I think the diploma is super cute too. Let's see where we can put it. Something like that. And I think that's where I'm going to stop with that. But see how now the card has all those little graduation elements and the shaker behind it. I'm trying to shake it where you can see it. Let me knock it all down. So you see how it kind of fell back there in the back, and then you can shake it to move it up. Cute. And then we can put a sentiment right here. And the one I'm going to use is 
I believe it. No, I don't need, I'm going to do You Inspire Me. This is from my stamp set called um, Chin Up Buttercup. And I found that some of these sentiments work for like graduation stuff. I think that's super cool. So I'm going to put it on a small block because you could have stamped it beforehand. But I'll be able to put this right down here. Yeah, that'll be fine. Now I've done this with a lot of dimensional pieces. You don't have to use dimensional pieces. You can use flat pieces as well, just like paper and things like that. I'll pick that up so I can get under there good. Stamp this into place. You inspire me. That is so cute. I really like that one. So that's one way I like to do them, by creating the shaker and then putting elements on top. I love this card. Now this would for sure be one that you would hand to somebody, maybe hang it on a gift or put it in a thicker, you know, a pretty good envelope because it's pretty big. But I love that. So that's one look, just to create the box and then decorate on top of it. Now if you did this with just paper pieces, it would be really cute too. So I'm going to show you another way to do it similar to that. So for this shaker card, if you have a Cricut Explorer, you're going to love this because I'm using a file that I created in the Cricut Explorer using some images that are part of my subscription as well as a possibly create a critter. I think that's what this one came from, this little monkey came from. But whenever I created this stamp set called um, Chin Up, I love this one right here that says hang in there. Can you see that? And when I created it, I thought this has to be done with something hanging off of something. So what better to hang off a limb than a monkey, right? So I'll share, I will share this file with you. It will be on, um, be linked below so you guys can get to it and use it. But look at this cute little piece that I cut out and we're going to turn this into a shaker card. So check this out. First, I have the little base piece that you will cut out and all of this has been sized and everything for you. When you open it up, this will be right for an A2 size card. So I'm going to turn this over. This is my acetate for this project and I'm going to put glue all along the back here so that I can stick the acetate down. Now this is what I love about this. I'm just using a big open space and I'll be able to fill it with whatever I want to and then it will be a shaker card, but I don't have to cut out any specific openings. This is going to do the work for me. I love the way this is going to look. I think I do. I'm really excited about this one. Some of that glue is going to bleed through. I got too much in some places, but we'll deal with it. It'll be clear anyway. All right, so now while that's like that, I'm just going to take the clear acetate and put it on the back of it. And I cut this acetate um, using my paper trimmer just to the exact size. So like I said, some of that glue is going to bleed through because I put too much on. So I'm just going to kind of wipe some away. Okay, so that is that may be hard to see. Let me bring this card base over and put it underneath it so you can see what we're working with. So we have our acetate sheet and our little monkey, which is so cute. Now, my acetate is not perfectly cut, so I'm going to come right beside it and get that little piece off that I missed. You probably can't even see it, and somebody else may not see it, but I can, so I'm just going to trim that away just so it's not in our way. That will do just fine. Okay, so there's the first part. Now we're going to build the rest using these pieces. So when you get this file and cut these out, these little pieces will all stack and turn into a little colored dimensional piece, which I love. Now if you don't have a Cricut, don't worry. Do just what we did before by using those little pieces that you can purchase for scrapbooking or you might have some cutouts in a scrapbook um, pad or something that you can just go ahead and use those pieces instead of having to cut any out. And I've told you, I don't know if I've said this to you guys before, but I have a friend who makes cards using those um, scrapbook pieces all the time. And so, they're some of my favorite cards that I've ever seen. She used to bring them, or when I would, um, was going to craft um, card parties, I hadn't been to one in a while, but when I was able to go to those, she would bring cards made with those little scrapbook pieces. And I used to think, that is the cutest idea. So, never be afraid to use those to make cards with. Alright, so let's keep gluing this guy down. I'm going to try not to be so heavy-handed this time with my glue. No promises. I'm just kind of heavy-handed. I had somebody ask me the other day how many bottles of glue it took to do the mini album I did with the envelopes. I only used the one. I think I, um, I didn't use a whole bottle either. I've only purchased the regular size bottle of this and then this one. I haven't purchased any more. So it lasts and goes a very long way. That's the Art Glitter Glue. I'll make sure I'll leave a link for that below too because I know everybody always wants to know about that. Okay, now I have some little leaves that are going to go up on our little branch here. And I cut them out with the Cricut as well. And I think I'll use my little pick-me-up tool for that because they seem to be tiny. <laughs> so let me see where they go. This one goes here. They just kind of, they all kind of match everything. So I don't really think you have to have a specific one in any certain spot. I think you can just put a leaf down and be fine with it. 
If you're interested in learning how I created this little piece, let me know and I'll do a video on that for the Cricut Explore. But really, I was just trying to show you how to create, how to build a shaker card. Okay, so here's our little monkey. He is so cute on the acetate. Here's what I love. Instead of having to cut out an intricate piece, I just stacked all this up on top of the acetate. So when I put the shaker pieces in, it's going to look like we have a very intricate shaker card, but it's really simple to make. So now we're going to come back here to the back and put our foam tape on. And I'm going to do the same thing I did before and cut this into smaller strips. So there's one layer, and now I'm going to do a second layer, just like we did on the last card. Okay, so I have this guy completely done. I'm going to run my powder tool around the edge to make sure no adhesive is exposed, just like that. And then I can put the shaker elements in. Now here's something I did. On the Explore, I want to show you, I cut these little tiny bananas, which I think are adorable. And I want to show you something. This little piece right here, that's a little banana stem that the Explore cut. That I was really amazed by that. Surprised. But it will be in the file that I'm going to include. And I'm going to put these little guys in. I think these bananas are adorable. I thought they'd be a cute little shaker element. And you could cut all of your shaker pieces um, from the Cricut. You could just cut a bunch of little pieces like this to put in there. But I'm also going to add some more glitter. Something like that. Probably not as much. I probably could have used more, but just going to start with that. Now, I already cut a little piece to be the backer for this one, and it's this kind of pale sky blue, because I thought that would be cute behind the tree like the sky. So I'm going to peel the backer off of my foam tape very carefully, not try not to flick that. And I'm going to add the backer. Okay, and now I can add the backing piece to it, which I cut already to size when I was getting everything ready for this card. So there's that piece. And this is what seals the glitter in, remember? This pale blue, when we flip it over, we have, look how cute, we have bananas and glitter. <laughs> I think that's cute. Those bananas are my favorite part. Okay, so now he's ready, but I've also made a couple of pieces to go on our card base. So let me score our card base and we'll get ready to put it together. So I have this little piece that's gonna go in the background to kind of pull some of that yellow out. So I'll put that piece down first. And this is from a paper pad that was sent to me by a subscriber as well. And unfortunately, I do not remember because I think I told y'all I cleaned my room up and I took all of my stuff out of envelopes and now I don't remember. And I'm not going to do that again. I'm going to try to remember who sends me stuff so I can make sure I give you guys credit because I appreciate it and I want you to know that. But if you sent me this paper pad, let me know. You may not remember this one particular pattern. <laughs> Isn't that pretty, though? I like it. Okay, now this guy's ready to go right here. I think he is adorable, so we're going to glue him down just like we did on the last one. But I think you're basically seeing how a shaker card works. It's just having an opening with an acetate cover and then creating like a sandwich using the foam tape and a cardboard or a um, cardstock piece or a paper piece behind it. So let me stick this guy down really good. I just love him. I think he is adorable. Now we need a sentiment, and I'm going to show you what I did. I have a two-inch scallop punch that I use for this. It's just this one that comes from close to my heart. So I punched this guy out in yellow because I wanted to pull those bananas out again. I want you to be able to see those guys. And then, so this is the paper that I cut the monkey from on the Cricut. And I'm going to use the sentiment from my um, stamp set called um, Chin Up Buttercup. And I'm going to use the one that says Hang In There. I think I told you that before, but I think it is perfect for this little monkey hanging on that branch. And I'm going to use some Distress Ink. And the reason I am, I don't always um, stamp with Distress Ink because sometimes it's a little too dry. But this is a brand new ink pad and it's really, really wet. So it does a really good job. All right, so I'm going to stamp in this corner, leaving myself ring to be able to punch around it. So like that. I think the brown is really cute. Now I have a one and three quarter circle punch. So I'm just going to put that in there and punch that. Just centering that sentiment in there like so. Then this guy will go on top of this little guy to give it a little yellow border. And it'll kind of look like a flower. It'll be kind of cute. Now I want it to go kind of in this area, but something I need to show you. I need some foam tape behind these corners because they won't be touching all the way around, but I can glue the rest onto here. So I'm going to take some foam tape, just those pieces that I've already got from trimming. Remember I told you I don't get rid of those. I'm going to use those. And so I'll put one. Matter of fact, I'll go in and decide where exactly I'm going to put it. 
right, we'll lay it here and that'll pick it up and then I'll know where to put the piece on top of it. There we go. And I'm going to put another piece under it so I'll know where to put it. Okay, so now these are single thickness. I got to make them double thick just like I did my shaker portion or else they won't touch. They'll just be sitting in the air. So I'm going to add a couple more pieces. Let's see if I have enough that are already pre-done to be big enough. Okay, so I got that off and I'm going to put a little adhesive on this side just for where it's going to touch. And this is going to go right here and those will help me place it too because they're where I had them before. I think that is so cute. I love it. Now let's shake it. See those bananas in there? They're so cute. I think they are adorable. Okay, so there's one there. That's another way to do it. But the biggest thing is, it's just a big square, which makes it super easy to do your shaker card. You're not having to do intricate shapes or any designs like that. I'm just using the big square and doing the decorating on top of the acetate, which I think works really well. It's easier for me that way anyway. So there you go. It's two cards, two shaker cards done virtually the same way. A big frame with the acetate and foam and a sandwich with glitter in the middle. And then I decorated the top of them so you get the shaker element, which is awesome. But you're not doing all the intricate cuts and the intricate foam taping around little sections. But it still looks pretty detailed. This is my favorite, I think. I think this one I um, filled up too much. If I knock it off or all right but it still looks like a party in there i think it looks great all right guys so that's another um idea for doing a shaker card don't forget i'll have the file for this which will help you build the shaker portion not the card or not the little um piece here but the shaker portion don't forget i'll have the link to that below and also to this stamp set that we use today which is called chin up buttercup it's got lots of sayings and these two as you can see are just good little encouraging um sentiments thanks so much for watching guys i hope you have a fantastic memorial day and i will talk to you on wednesday Bye-bye.